we have come here to the beautiful beaches of California first to show you our muscular physics and then to talk about the world's most popular television program, Baywatch. Everybody wonders why Baywatch is so successful. Well, maybe not everybody wonders, but at least people who work in television do. Anyway, some say it's because of the Buzumi babes who bounce in and out of every shot for no particular reason. Personally, that's the only reason I watch the show, but then again, I'm French. In Germany, they watch Baywatch for a different reason. For David Hazelholf, with his long, wavy hair and his muscular physique. David Hazelholf is not only the producer and star of Baywatch, but he has become Germany's number one pop star. So now, Eurotrash will try to explain why David Hazelholf is so popular. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever find uh, the answer. But come on, jean Paul. Surf is up. Come on. The wall has fallen and the citizens of East and West gather to celebrate their union. Only one man has the strength and vision to bring them all together with music. David Hasselhoff. We knew we had something. We had no idea that the wall was going to come down and we had no idea that we would go number one for eight weeks. Um, but when I went behind the wall in East Germany before the wall came down, people were really responding to that song looking for freedom. They were. They were looking for freedom. I've been looking for freedom. Armed only with a silver codpiece and a bandana, David's monster smash, looking for freedom, entered the annals of German history, becoming the anthem of reunification. David is probably more famous to Eurotrash viewers as the hunky lifeguard star of Baywatch, or Buttwatch as it's known to aficionados. But life wasn't always a beach for the Hass. While he was having hit after hit in Germany, he lost his day job, the first series of Baywatch bombed in America, and the network were all set to sink it without trace. But some of David's rich German friends came to the rescue, lending him the money to produce the second series himself. It's now the most successful show in the world. But David has never forgotten those bad times. And so I wrote songs about life and about pain and about failure and about uh, regrouping and about continuing on and believing in yourself. Some of the night I'm facing a night of loneliness. Some of the night I'm lost in the empty David is now a household name throughout Germany, with constant TV appearances in which his fun-loving, zany personality overcomes all language barriers. Will everybody have a lot of everybody have a lot of fun? Basically, David is uh, what I'm trying to say is like every young man would like to see himself, I'd like to imagine himself. He's active. Um, he's sporty, he's handsome and he's dead muscular. Hi, my name is Jörg Brunner. I'm Germany's number one David Hasselhoff, Dubel. Just in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you are, Dubel is German for double. And when it comes to taking off Hasselhoff, Jörg and his band are simply the best. From seven international competitors, I was chosen to receive this very special award as the best David Hasselhoff imitator in Europe. So Eurotrash decided to catch Jorg in action at a local fan club gig. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the number one David Hasselhoff double of Germany, Mr. Jörg Böhner. <laughs> moves and grooves seem to have the fans rocking in the aisles, but his biggest supporters stayed at home. Well, we support him as much as we can, and his daddy drives him to all his concerts. Um, I help to do the writing because he's actually not very good at that. The real David is one step ahead of his imitators. He's learnt to sing in German. Sei ganz still, ich hab das Gefühl. Daddy, weißt du, ich 
schwer so gern entstehen. Unaware of his mentor's surprising grasp of the German language, York's relaxing after a storming gig with a bit of birthday cake. Uh, hey, York, uh, happy 20th birthday. Uh, do you really look like me or do I really look like you? That's the question. No, he looks like Barry Manilow, actually. On Now My British Shams, it's time once again to look at the wonderful world of Poupou. Here at Eurotrash, we are very proud of our Poupou reports. Few programs offer you such comprehensive coverage of European caca. From toilets to turds, we are always there first, bringing you the real poop scoop. And for our next story, we have a Eurotrash poop exclusive. As we take our camera and we go up inside the anus, and in the anus we find something Jean very Paul, strange. Jean-Paul, you, yeah. you cannot say anus on the British TV. You can say anus or rebilis, but you cannot say anus. You cannot say anus in the... No. British TV. You mean that we can go and stick the camera into the anus, but we cannot pronounce the word. It's strange. No, it's crazy. Completely crazy. I don't understand that. I'm sorry, everybody. Excusez-moi. If you're ever in Munich and the queues for the loo are too long, there's only one place to go. The Potty Museum. Herr Manfred Clauder is the world's number one and probably number two potty collector. Whatever your toiletry needs, Manfred has the perfect place to drop your bombs. During Second World War, an uh, English gentleman demonstrated what they were thinking of Hitler in shitting on him, and that was good. Of the 8,000 that are on display, pride of place goes to this little number, designed to fit between women's thighs. And they made great joy to the women who used them. And you even see a mirror in it so that women could look at their sweetest point from this perspective. Very erotic and nice. And if all this toilet talk has left you bursting with enthusiasm, you don't have to look very far to relieve yourself. If uh, there are too many people who want to use the same toilet, I just uh, tell them they can take one of the putties without problem. Right, do we have any volunteers? Ah, uh, yes. Ha, 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 you. Drop your trousers now. <laughs> But Jean-Paul, you can't bring the magic Mr. Sphincter on the show. <laughs> we can't interview Sphincters on British TV. <laughs> I am so depressed. Maybe Antoine is all right. You know, I will never be a professional from TV. It's impossible. I feel... Oh, what's coming on? Pipi and Popo, what are you doing here? Nice to see you. What have you to say to me? What? That I should be more happy? You are right. It's true. It's true. And you? That I must learn to love myself. It's okay. It's great. You have good advice. And you what? What do you say? About Antoine. That Antoine de Cohn wears a woman's panties. And has been cross-dressing for many years. I was sure about that. That's right, Pipi and Popo. You are great to tell me some funny news, you know. So, you know what you do? Now I feel better and I feel relaxed and I am no more depressed. So let's go and have fun and dance in the forest, okay? We go. Allez. Have a good party. In the sleepy village of Rotam Sea, no home is complete without a gnome. This is Gnome Mecca and the site of the world's only gnome museum. Here to guide us around this ideal gnome exhibition is Gunter Griebel. This is the gnome's natural habitat, the mine, and over here we have a unicorn. Gunter not only owns the museum and the world's largest gnome factory, allegedly his grandfather actually invented the little fellows. The gnome uh, is representative in many ways of um, Germany's character and this illustrates itself particularly in the way they dress. I couldn't imagine anything more typically German than the gnome. It has all of our virtues and vices. As competition in the gnome market hots up, Gunder has branched out into the manufacture of naughty novelty gnomes. Generally, we do very well. We sell over 100,000 naughty gnomes a year, but we have a few problems at the moment with uh, Eastern European copies. In fact, just lately, we noticed a drop in sales that's been absolutely appalling. The recent influx of cheap imitation imps from Poland has forced German manufacturers to lower their standards. Shock horror. 
But now I want to say that all the garden gnomes who are called garden gnomes and are doing other things, by example with a knife in the back, or who are not well dressed, and we cannot have every respect against these things, and we have to, to fight day and night. The crisis has led to an emergency session of the first international gnome convention, Euronome 94. In a tense atmosphere, the world's leading gnome manufacturers met, and spurred on by Professor Friedman's oratory skills, draconian measures were reluctantly passed. We were right to take action against this threat. The courts have decreed that all non-German gnomes will be confiscated at the borders. As no more approaches, non-area gnomes should be afraid. Be very afraid. And then I said, but Jean-Paul, you can't say penis on British TV. <laughs> Antoine, come on, it is time for our next introduction. <laughs> Not now, Jean-Paul, I'm busy. But we need to introduce the next story, you know, how British Shams needs all facts on information. Let me tell you something, Jean-Paul. Our British chums couldn't give a froggy's testicle about facts and information. Look at them out there. They're totally pissed, probably burping up some cheap takeout curry and just waiting for us to give them some images to wank all over. Don't waste your time. I don't believe this, Antoine. Our British chums are not wankers. They want real information. So if you won't help me to introduce the next story properly, I will have to do it myself. <laughs> Go ahead, punk. Make my day. OK. Bon. Uh, so, uh, here is the next story. Thank you. Surprisingly, we ended up in Germany, a country and a cuisine that we usually avoid. We were following restaurateur Tom Labouche as he stocked up on supplies for his larder. Have you got anything new for me? Yes, these are just in. Oh, those look nice. Oh, nice and juicy. Oh, they're very good. Very good quality. Oh, I've 150 of those. They look good enough to eat. They're natural, nutritious, and according to this bug breeder, they're the fast food of the future. Everyone sees these insects as filthy pests, just because the Bible says so. But we have a mission to turn this idea completely around. In Africa, People eat insects because it's such a nutritious food source, just as roast beef is for English people. Back at the not very aptly named Muhammad Ali restaurant, the maggot menu is attracting swarms of customers, eager to replace their national diet of sausages with a different type of grub. When people see worms, they think about a garbage can, but I don't see any problem with it. Before, you are going to eat a grasshopper. You have to take off those hooks here, and then it's ready to eat. And if you have roasted them in the pan, they are like a chip. If getting stuck into a stick insect bugs you, there's a food counselor on hand. There now. Give me your hand. Put it in the bowl. Grab a grasshopper. Ooh. Now pop mm. it in your mouth. Ooh. Tasty. Mmm, they may not be everybody's cup of tea, but on the whole, grasshopper risotto seems to be going down a treat. The taste is not the problem, to look at it is the problem. The chef even manages to dish up some dung beetles for dessert. Uh, that's some beetles in butter toffee. I had the idea for about five minutes ago. I've never had anything like this before, you know, but it tastes sweet. And it's dead nice. A Eurotrash warning, although it's early days for such delicacies as maggot's milkshake or cricket's a la creme, some side effects are already noticeable. Insect, and I know he watches me. One of our favorite activities here at Eurotrash is to go to Germany, find some naked German men and then watch them make total fools out of themselves. Naked German men can be very, very funny. Jean-Paul is in Germany right now looking for some. Who is it hanging, my little Jean-Paul? Mission accomplished, Antoine. I have found somebody. His name is Hans. Is Hans 
German? Yes, Antoine, he's German. Is Hans naked? Yes, Antoine, he's very naked. So then, Hans will make a very funny story for your trash. Uh, well, actually, no, Antoine. Hans is not very funny. He's naked on German, yes, but not very funny. I'm sorry, Antoine. Well, then what the hell is he doing on our show, Jean-Paul? And in your car? Look, I think you're missing the whole point of this exercise. Now you come back here, Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul! Jean-Paul!